recording. Okay, uh, we'll start with Dryad. Our group starting with Forest, and we're gonna go on each of the um, draft after that. Each of them will probably be their own video. So we're gonna go with Dryad. Uh, it's an interesting card, right? I think it'll be playing this constructed. I, I think it's like probably not good enough. It deals really well at like trading, especially with like one ones, like just murders one ones. Uh, yeah, take two. This is fine. So it's a pretty good two, two, two drop. Good at just like holding its own for a bit. Why run Dread over Alcat? Yeah, like. There's that. Um, like, you just take this and take two. That's about it. Uh, Piercing Rune. Uh, oops. Uh, Ivy Spellbomb. Okay. Deal three damage to an enemy follower. Deal two damage if you played other cards this turn, which is the thing you normally do. Uh, well, two other cards. Like, that's an average th a normal thing comes in. To play with, uh,. Forest. So it's three play points. There's that one card. I forget what it's called. Like something prints, right? You can make one of your four cost cards cost or less cost zero. So you can do that and keep this card in your hand. So you have like a, like you have a situation where you can, you can actually make this zero, so you can play it on turn you combo off. It's interesting. Uh, I don't like how they're printing cards with a. Uh, Burn face. Hmm. But does Forest even want to run three playpoint removal? Seems like the removal is just so good already that they don't need this card. But me in a control build might run, want to run this. Uh, this kills um, Urius. So if they didn't, if they had a problem with Urius before, which I don't think they, they kind of did, but not really. Uh, this is good at dealing with that. And then late game they can use it to burn face for easier kills. Yeah, yeah, it does one more. Yeah, it does one more damage on the bird. So yeah, people would play. Mm. Yeah, it does one more damage than Sylvan Justice, but it costs also one more play point. And doesn't give you the fairy. The fairy is actually really good from Sylvan Justice. I think we're gonna move on. Uh, and t take two, always pick this. That's really good. It's, a it's actually um, so far the cards that we're, we're getting for for us is making it better. Take two, especially because they're bronze, right? Uh, Beetle Warrior. This card's ridiculous. A three play point uh, three four with a uh, storm seems pretty good. Um, at the low low cost of having to play other cards in the same turn. This card's really dumb. This is going to be like staple in some kind, in any kind of like tempo, aggro, or maybe even control. Maybe even control wants to play this. I don't know how much room they have for it, but um, like tempo, mid range, aggro, combo, force are all going to play this card probably. Because you can just go like free fairy, free fairy, get a three four, like for three. Um. You might even run, you might even run, like, start running cards like Angelic Snipe. So, like, you can go, like, Angelic Snipe, Angelic Snipe, Beetle Warrior, that's five play points. And then you can do, like, Roach Roach. Obviously, it's not as good as Roach, but, uh, its, sta it's stats are solid, so it's actually good for trading. For Roach, like, sometimes you are forced to trade with Roaches. For this card, you, like, you just actually just kill a thing and survive most of the time. Also, like, imagine like playing on turn five. With, like two fairies, you just like two fairies, and you evolve this, and it's like a, uh, <laughs> it's a cheaper, um, Albert.
Yeah, so those cards are kind of ridiculous. Especially with all the freak cards that Fairy ha uh, Fucking Forest has. Yeah. Uh, take two. That, like another really good card, take two. Cybell. <laughs> this card is real or fake? Has side games gone too far? I don't know. Starting first, yeah. Haste first. Uh, at the end of your turn, give all those followers plus zero, plus one. So you all get plus one more health. Your stats aren't actually that bad. Like, three play points for one four is like your average defensive card rate. Right? This is like a Sparta Sergeant or um, that Ward Angel for neutral. That, those kind of stats are a little hard to remove. Doesn't really kill anything by yourself. But it can like protect your fairies from a cyclone blade. That's about it. And it's also like if it survives like two turns, it gets a ton of value. You can't really see this being played for um in constructed. We'll see. Maybe maybe Tempo Force wants this, but I feel like the three the three drop slots gonna be very uh clogged. Because like nothing really replaced Ancient Elf. And they probably want to run Beetle Warrior. And they probably want to run Ivy Spellbomb, maybe. Like, really, I can't see this card being played over those ones. Uh, next we got a two, uh, we're into Silver cards now. A 2 play point, uh, 2 2. It's got a really cute bunny. Uh, when it's evolved, you gain plus 2 plus 2. If, at least three other cards play turn. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's adorable. Brave and small. Brave and small. Uh yeah, like it competes with some like really busted two drops in forest. I don't see this card really being played. It's a, it's uh evolve is too situational. You can't like evolve us on turn four. Um, like you don't want to. You don't really want to play us on turn like five. Like, maybe optimal like optimal situation maybe like, like we'll do like fairy fairy and then um, Felper kitten and then this and then you evolve this. That's that's like that's pretty good. That's some good value for play points. So that'd be really cool in Take Two, but I don't see that being a thing in that constructed. Yeah, it's a 6 6 when it evolves, so it's like. good. She loses her bunny. Oh no, no, she, the bunny comes. Either she becomes bigger. I think she becomes bigger because she's tiny, right? She's tiny here. Yeah, here's, here's the rare parrot. And then here's the bunny, and then um, she gets bigger, and here's the, the rare parrot right here, and then here's the bunny. Yeah, she just, she just grows up. Alright, uh, the aggro killing card. Explosive trap. Uh, three play points. Amulet, silver. Uh, so this comes up, up it might come up quite often in, uh, in take two. I don't know how good it'd be take two actually. It'll slow down the opponent, but uh, it'll just like just trade instead of uh, attack your face. Usually, it's better to start tr trading in early game, anyways, with uh, smaller dudes. Uh, whenever an enemy follower attacks your leader, deal two damage to that follower. So it just protects your face from small, small creatures. It hard counters roach combo. It really stops like any aggro early game. There's a lot of their guys are one or two elf. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, whenever they attack, they get it, it's individual, not like explosive trap where it's the whole board.
Like, in a control meta, this card might just be super dead. Because they'll just, like, <laughs> just ignore it. You might just, just like, three play points do nothing. You don't actually lose that much about, like, tempo by not, not going face or not losing a dude. Arena card? Yeah, yeah. Um, just the fact that this card exists means it's going to be hard for aggro to be... It's harder for aggro to be a thing. Because once aggro starts getting prevalent, people start playing this card. It makes it hard for them. Hmm. No, a lot of like super linear aggro decks, like uh, this, really, really, really hurts uh, shadow aggro because it will. It, they can't. They can't trade and uh, keep their uh, shadow reaper alive most of the time. Agrimated. Well, we'll see. I like aggro is super strong right now, right? So this will like it definitely slows down the game, but we don't know how. I don't feel like it's gonna be like that uh, that much stronger. Play control. We'll see. I think it might be more balanced, which would be nice. I'd, I'd like to see having aggro and control in the, in the same meta instead of just one. Yeah, like. But yeah, definitely if you see a rise of an aggro, we see a rise of this card being played. Because, like, you don't have to play in turn 3. You can save it for a turn where you know they're going to want to go face with their uh, with their weenie dudes. Oh, uh, yeah, this this dude. The uh, elf butler. Uh, yeah, whenever you play a forest follower that costs at least 6 play points, Trapped three from the Cosmos card. So forest um, followers with six. So that's like um, the lion. I mean the fairy beast. Who else do you play? Uh, thinking of like cards that you currently play, not not the new cards. This butler. Cynthia, yeah. Cynthia. Uh, yeah, Cynthia is actually really ridiculous for this card. It's kind of, it's kind of, that's actually kind of a dumb combo. <laughs> wolf. Uh, yeah. And when you play a Wolf, you expect to win the next turn, so I don't know if you really want to uh, really care about that direction. Maybe you do. Maybe you, you actually can't kill them next turn. Yeah, this card's really good. I'm just going to try to think of what followers you want to play with it. Like, even on turn 4, it's not, like, too bad, right? It's actually not that good. The stats are okay. But definitely, if it, if it uh, costs 1, it'd be really good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually, this card's gonna be, uh, sitting beside his, his friend, which we're gonna see soon. So let's, uh, uh, take two. Good. Definitely good card. Because you're gonna have a lot of you might have a lot of big drops. Funky big drops, like Forest Gigas and Forest Giant and stuff like that. <laughs> or the Mighty Dwarf. The uh Clash deal two damage to enemy leader. Uh-huh. Card's really bad. Like stats are Kind of poor for a seven drop, right? He's like a, he's like a big stats, but it's not that ridiculous. I prefer him have more health. He doesn't have any relevant uh, keywords, like ward, a rush. Cost seven. He if you evolve him and attack something, you only do two damage to the enemy leader. Maybe like if you play him alongside another card, we're gonna look at like um. Actually, I'll just say it now. The uh, the arm wrestling battle of something, strength or something. Uh, they're forced to attack your um, followers instead of your leader. He might be played with long aside that because he has like pseudo ward. Uh, but really, it's just a big fat 
nothing. Take two, you probably it's a big body. It's like worse than it has worse stats than a um mammoth. It really, it's not that good. It might do four damage to the enemy leader. Filler card, yeah. Uh, fairy cage. Whenever you play a card, put a fairy into your hand if you don't already have one. So, it's, if you have one fairy, this is infinite fairies. This, this is more pack filler, I believe. But there might be some interesting combos we can do. Or it's like you always have cards to activate your 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 play to or more claws kind of things, right? But it takes a board slot up and. You never really want to take up board slots in Forest. They really want all five of their slots available to them most of the time. Yeah, like I saw that I saw that um, interaction too. You you play uh, Fairy Cage with um, yeah, Elfo Gemstones. It turns all your fairies into uh, one play point, one damage to an enemy follower. Like, you can like combine. Oh, you're thinking of fairy, uh, fairy paradise, but that gives you a fairy at the end of turn. It's not as strong as this one. This one pretty much every time you play one of your fear fairies, you get you just recycle them. You just have like an infinite amount of, of fairies as long as you have play points. Yeah, it's like, hmm. I feel like you already just get enough fairies throughout your other cards that you don't really need. Something like this. Maybe use something like this, and then you can ignore using some of the other fairy generating cards. Also, you might play this card with a uh, DTP, but it's like pretty slow. <laughs> Mid range rush forest, yeah. We'll see. It has potential, just because the fact that it's like a oh, like a really reoccurring like a reoccurring resource. And uh, playing cards out for the uh, card count is important in Forest. I think the play point cost is a little high for this, though. Maybe three would have been better to compare it to other uh, Power 5 notes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, actually, that's a, that's a good point. You really can't play this beside um, Elven Princess Mage because uh, if you lose your. Lose your uh, fairies, they use your cost fairies. You just get regular cost costed fairies back to your hand. This would be really dumb if it makes your fairies zero too. That'd be like stupid. I think we'll move on. Uh, take two. You probably don't want to take those. Super clunky, and it's probably better golds and legendaries. Hopefully, that you can pick. I don't think PTP has a problem getting shadows. And the only reason that you play this card would just be to generate extra shadows. Oh boy, we have uh, Tarzan the Base Man. Like 5 play point, 4 5 word. Uh, not that good. So, just like, if you're forced to play him on, on, on a turn that's not 10. He's just mediocre. Five play point four five with word. It's like just like a like <laughs> pretty easy to get rid of, dude. Slows your phone down a little bit. But on uh on the hands ten, so when you have uh, ten play points, uh, summon a jungle warden. <laughs> so you summon another one of him. And you give all allied jungle warden storm. Why? Why did why did why did they do this? Why did they why did they do this? Could have been Rush. It could have been like Bane. But no, it had to be Storm, right? It had to be Storm. So this is eight. Da if they have no no defenses, it's eight damage going to their face. Obviously a lot weaker than comboing with uh, Roaches, but. 
you get the bodies and the flexibility of this card. <laughs> so yeah, stop printing Albert. Stop printing enhance. Almost kill your opponent. Like half halfway kill your opponent. On a card that's like semi playable. Definitely a lot weaker than Albert. It without without the enhance. But I'd say it's probably almost better than Albert. Like almost on like on par. Like it costs one more. But you get two bodies, and they have ward. So even if you don't kill the opponent, yeah, they actually have to deal with um, a decent board. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's just too much. Uh... Hmm. Definitely take this, pick this up and can take you because it can help you just end the game on the spot. Uh, Chrysalia, Iron, Iron. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, six play point four six. So not really impressive stats. Uh, word. Yeah, it's good. Actually, you know what. Six health is pretty good. You don't really have to un underestimate six health. Uh, six is much like I think six is better than five. Obviously, but like there's a lot more situations where it's gonna survive. Uh, this was store three defensive leader. Enhance eight. Recover one of which point. Joe, I like turn eight. You like a free evolve. It's good. That's yeah, fine. I don't know if this card can be played over White Wolf. She does have the ward, and she has uh, two more health. I can. I think this, this card just kind of replaces Mai's, right? Mai's wasn't really seeing play anyways, but this card just like just better. Where Mai's like maybe maybe you can get free fairies to activate his ability early, but this like. On turn eight, you just drop it, evolve it, kill a thing, have like a, a big ward left over. Seems pretty good. Implants are blocker, yeah. That's what I mean, like a lot of like Albert, Implanter, those kind of cards. A lot of cards that you evolve have a uh, five health, a uh, five attack. And this is like really big. Yeah, same with like a lot of your, a lot of your three drops. Um, we're gonna have a hard time just evolving, killing this. Instar like extra bonus of restore three defense to here seems alright. Just slows down aggro a lot. Take two is fine. It's not like win the game good, but it's uh, pretty good. It's definitely a lot worth worst things you can get. Uh, she, well, she can't win the game like Lucifer can. Lucifer has the has the option of just like blowing the opponent up right for the at four damage. Borderline legendary. Ah, uh, I don't know. Seems like seems good as a gold card. Yeah, this card is definitely legendary, right? Seven play points, heal yourself full, pretty much. Seven play points, six six. Create a wolf, like gets two more stats, heals you more, and only costs one more. Uh, fanfare, actually necromancy X, restore <laughs> X defense tier leader. Uh, X equals number of shadows you have, and then change the number of shadows you have to zero. So, turn 7, you're probably going to have at least, definitely more than 7, because you're playing 4, so you have a bunch of fairies that you sacrifice and stuff like that. Because it's probably going to heal you like, for probably 10 plus on average, right? <laughs> I 
This card is ugly and has ugly effect. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh weird that it's it's a, like a shadow kind of effect. I feel like they looked at Path of Pur Path Purgatory has been like a forest like a forest card, right? Forest card forever, and now that and they just kind of like assume that shadows is a thing that forest deals with. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird that they make this card for forest. Like thematically, it would be a little bit better in, in Shadow. But yeah, it's good. Uh, definitely gonna... Might be a new archetype around it. Like, uh, Control Forest might be pretty decent now. It's because they have a... Which was set their life total card. Reno you know, Jackson, maybe. It's definitely not as strong as, like... I mean, no Jackson, because you're you're dealing with a uh, 20 health, and at that point in the game, in this point in the game, you're gonna, all of your guys are gonna have lots of attack, and there's gonna be a lot of combos and stuff to kill you in one turn. Around uh, this point in the game, but it just like shuts down aggro, shuts down mid range. They're gonna have a hard time killing you. Uh, you play you play this turn before uh, turn um, nine, Albert. So you heal back to a point where they can't kill you anymore. And your stats are pretty good. So that's that's a really good card. Again, in take two, you play this, everyone's like, they're gonna be super frustrated. They spent the whole game trying to chip you down. You play this one card and then you're back to full. And it has pretty good stats. Mm -hmm. This is a good card. I probably wanna play three of them though. Maybe two. I think two is pretty good. Because at least you have a pretty good chance of drawing one. The first one will heal you a lot. The second one you can heal you probably less. Because you're not going to be playing that late, that much after the first one. And then third one probably would. If you have to play a third one, probably won't heal you at all. I think just two is fine. Hmm. Elf Curse is the worst is the worst legend in the set. Huh. No. Not even close. Uh, we have this card. Uh, whenever those follower attacks the enemy leader, deal damage to that leader until their defense drops to zero. So as uh, death touch for people, as bane for players. It is just gonna kill you if it, you don't remove it. Not much to say other than like you just you just shove this in your control forest deck. You drop it on a turn that you're not gonna die, uh, and your opponent will have to immediately remove it or die. And there's not a lot of cards that just like you drop it and they have to kill it or die. Or it's like sometimes they can ignore your big guy and just like a like play, play a word. Maybe you have to use resource to kill the ward, do a little bit of damage to them, but this like does 20 damage to them. Ridiculous. Uh, but in, in, in this game, there's a ton of removal, so it's gonna be not too hard to get rid of this. Hmm. I also note that uh, these two cards have the the seven and eight, eight play points, so it makes uh, the butler cost less when they play them. So it's it needs like when you play this on turn turn nine and then immediately have ward to protect it, which is nice. But it's not it's not like it dying to attack damage that you're really gonna worry about. It's dying to just removal at that that point in the game. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, players might want to hold the removal for for a long time because they're worried about you dropping the anomaly. It's kind of like that thing where like people are always worried about keeping their life total above ten because they might think you might have Albert. So it's like 
them ha being forced to play around a card like this is an advantage to you. So it might like you might play a Crystal Aaron later in the game, and then they might not want to remove it because uh, they're more worried about you playing Anomaly. That is a good point. That uh, psychological warfare. So that's it for forest cards. I think overall they got three decent cards, especially the um, Beetle Warrior, Bell Bomb. Uh, this can be a really good card in the meta, depending on how the meta is. This card's really good. This card's really good. This card's good. These cards are both uh, pretty decent. Like you make a new, it's kind of like leading towards a new archetype. Really haven't seen prevalent, which is a uh, control forest. Hmm. Use an anomaly to clear wards for Roach. Alright, yeah, full curve of cards. Four, five, six, eight, seven. Did they plan this? Was this, was this the plan all along? Four, five, six, seven, eight? That, that's how they want you to curve out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, there's definitely multiple wind cons you can shove into one forest deck. Like, you still play Roaches, and you still play Wolf and Bolt. You take up a few slots, you just like shove some healing in your deck, and like this card, maybe like one or two of this card. When you're gonna face. Every time you face Forest, you're gonna be like. I have no idea how they're gonna win the game. And they're just gonna like play a card, like, oh, that's, that's their win con. I didn't play around this certain win con, now I'm dead. And kind of situation. You're gonna, always gonna wanna stay at 20 HP. You're always gonna have wanna keep up removal for this card. You wanna keep some kind of board clear for a jungle word and that's gonna beat you down in turn ten. It's like, I don't know. You're so versatile. Where their early game's all gonna be about the same as well. Hmm. Because Warden isn't like remove or die, right? If they don't kill you on turn, uh, turn ten, like eight damage, it's quite a bit. But they will chip you down too. Mm -hmm. Forest had no storm and poor value cards out of these. Yeah, Forest got a good this expansion. They usually get a good. 